Hello, in this video we're going to take a look at solving quadratics by completing the square. So this will be a topic you're probably familiar with already from GCSE Maths, but it's something that will come up again in A-level. So it's important you've got a good understanding of how to complete the square and how this can help us to solve a quadratic equation, which hopefully this video is going to help with. So we'll be looking at three different questions in this video. The first one is pretty basic and that's just going to demonstrate how to complete the square and how it helps us solve a quadratic. Then we'll look at a bit of a trickier example and finally another trickier question. Although to be honest, you may have seen questions like this before and also uh, once you know how to complete the square, any question that involves it is going to be pretty straightforward. So let's look at the first question where we have to solve x squared plus 8x plus 3 equals 0 by expressing it in the form x plus a all squared plus b. And we call this form here the completed square form. Okay. Now you may have uh, seen it written slightly differently before. Okay, you may have seen it written like this. A multiplied by x plus b all squared plus c. And this is the same thing. They're both completed square forms, right? So if we're dealing with a quadratic equation where the coefficient of x squared is equal to 1, so the number in front of the x squared is equal to 1, exactly like this example here, then when we put it into a completed square form, it will take this form here. If the coefficient of x squared is not equal to 1, when we complete the square, it's going to take this form here, right? So they're both completed square forms. They're just going to vary depending on what quadratic we're dealing with. And if that doesn't make sense, I've got examples of both in this video. So by the end, it should also make sense. So let's get rid of all these highlights and then answer the question. So when we want to solve a quadratic equation by completing the square, the first step is obviously going to be to complete the square. So first step, look at the quadratic and look at the coefficient of x squared, right? If it's equal to 1, exactly like this example here, then what we're going to want to do is write a bracket with an x, and then we're going to take a look at the coefficient of x in the quadratic equation. So in this case, it's positive 8, right? So we're going to divide that by 2 or half it. So if we half positive 8, we're going to get positive 4. And that's then going to go in my bracket next to the x. So now we've got x plus 4. I'm going to close my bracket, and I'm going to square all of that. And you can see this is kind of resembling my completed square form a little bit already. So now when I expand this, what I want is for it to be equal to the original quadratic equation, right? So let's expand it and see what it's equal to now. So if I were to expand this, well, we've got x plus 4 multiplied by x plus 4. So let's sort of expand. So we're going to get x squared plus 4x plus 4x and finally plus 16. And so if we sort of simplify this a bit more, we're going to get x squared plus 8x plus 16, right? So let's now compare this to see what it's like compared to what we want. So we've got x squared and x squared. That looks good. Plus 8x plus 8x. That also looks good. However, the constant on the end is plus 16, but we want it to be plus 3. So how could I alter this expansion so that when I expand it, I get plus 3 on the end as my constant rather than plus 16? Well, it's, it's really easy, right? If I were to just subtract 13 from this, it would give me what I want. So I could just subtract 13 from that sort of uh, bracket there. And now hopefully you can see, let me get rid of all this working out. Hopefully you can see I've expressed this in a completed square form and it's also equal to the left-hand side of this equation. So I can set it equal to zero. So now we've completed the square. How does that help me when it comes to solving the quadratic, which just means find the values of X such that if I substitute them in here, it's gonna give me zero. Well, because of the form it's in, it's actually really easy for me to rearrange this to make x the subject. And when x is the subject, that's going to give me the values of x that make the equation equal 0. So how can I rearrange it? Well, I'm going to add 13 to both sides to start off with. So we're going to get x plus 4 all squared is equal to 13. Now we've got x plus 4 all squared. And I want to undo that because I want to make, obviously, x the subject. So how can we undo a square? we can just square root both sides and that's just going to give me x plus 4 and that's equal to and remember because we're taking the square root we need to take the positive and negative so we're going to get plus or minus the square root of 13 and then finally I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides and we get x is equal to negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 13 and this gives me the two solutions to my quadratic equation x is equal to negative 4 plus root 13 or x is equal to negative 4 minus root 13 okay hopefully that makes sense Let's look at a bit of a trickier example now, but it's still pretty easy, as I said at the start. We have to solve x squared plus x minus 3 is equal to 0 by expressing it in the form x plus a all squared plus b, so expressing it in our completed square form. First thing, look at the coefficient of x squared. So as you can see, it's equal to positive 1, which means we can continue like we did before. We're going to write a bracket, and inside we're going to write x 
Next, let's look at the coefficient of our x in the original quadratic. So it's equal to positive 1. So it's half it, which is 0 0.5. Now, in A level, we tend to use fractions rather than decimals. So rather than writing plus one, uh, 0 0.5, I'm going to write plus 1 half. Okay, so plus 1 half, and that's all squared. So now I'm going to expand it again and see what I get. And I'll do it a bit quicker this time. So if we expand this, we're going to get x squared plus x plus 1 over 4, or 0.25. Now let's compare it to what we want. You'll notice the first two terms are exactly the same as what we want, which is good. But once again, it's the constant that is wrong. So we want it to read minus 3, but at the minute it's plus 1 fourth, or plus 0 0.25. So how could I alter this to make it read minus 3? Well, I could subtract 3.25 from both sides. And as I said, we tend to use fractions more than decimals. So as a fraction, 3.25 is 13 over 4. So I'm going to subtract that from both sides. And so now, 13 over 4, I've expressed this quadratic equation in a completed square form. And so now we can solve it, so find the values of x that make that equation equal 0, just by rearranging to make x the subject. So I'll add 13 over 4 to both sides, and we get x plus 1 half all squared is equal to 13 over 4. I'm then going to undo that square by taking the square root of both sides, so we're going to get x plus 1 half is equal to plus or minus the square root of 13 over 4. And finally, subtracting a half from both sides gives me that x is equal to negative 1 half plus or minus the square root of 13 over 4, which are the two solutions to this quadratic equation. So again, pretty straightforward. Let's look at this final example now where we have to solve 2x squared plus 12x plus 14 equals 0 by expressing it in our completed square form. And you can see, because the coefficient of our x squared is not equal to 1, it's in this slightly different completed square form, which is basically the same thing. So, because the coefficient of our x squared is not equal to 1, we have to add in an additional step to help us answer this question, okay? And that step is we want to make the coefficient of x squared equal to 1, and we can do that by factorising out this 2, okay? And we're going to factorise out the 2 from the first two terms only. So, if I do that, okay, I'm going to pull out the 2 from the first two terms, and so then in my brackets, I'm going to get x squared plus 6x. Okay, I'm going to leave the constant exactly as it is, and that's equal to 0. Now, I've chosen to use square brackets because in a second, I'm going to complete the square of this bit in the middle. And so I'm going to have more brackets, and so it's just going to get a bit confusing if I've got two sets of curly brackets. It's just easier to use square brackets and curly brackets because then it's easier to see what is what. So, like I said, right, now we have a coefficient of x squared that's equal to 1. What I'm going to do from here is complete the square of whatever is inside this square bracket. And that's really easy to do. So we've got two lots of, well, how can I complete the square of that? Because the coefficient of x squared is one, I'm gonna write my curly brackets, write x. Then I'm gonna look at the coefficient of my x. In this case, it's positive six. So I'm gonna half it and get positive three and add that on. So plus three all squared. And then my 14 is gonna stay the same. Now, when we expand this, I want it to be equal to whatever is inside those square brackets, right? So let's expand it and see what we get. So at the minute, if I was to expand it, I'll do it down here. We'll get x squared plus 6x plus 9, okay? And you can see the first two terms are exactly what we want, but we have this plus 9 on the end, which we don't want. And so to get rid of that, I'm just going to subtract 9 like so, okay? And now we've got it pretty much in a completed square form. And so to finish up, all I'm going to do is just expand these square brackets, okay? So I'm going to multiply 2 from by both of the terms inside the square brackets. So that's going to give me two lots of x plus 3 all squared minus 18 plus 14 equals 0. And so finally simplifying, it's going to give us two lots of x plus 3 all squared minus 4, and that equals 0. <clears throat> and as you can see now, we've expressed this in a completed square form like we wanted to do at the start. And so now we can follow the steps like before to make x the subject. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides to begin with. This is going to give me two lots of x plus 3 all squared is equal to 4. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 2, and that will give me that x plus 3 all squared is equal to positive 2. And then to undo the square, I'm going to square root both sides, and we get x plus 3 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 2. And finally, subtracting 3 from both sides gives us that x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 2. And they are the two solutions to this quadratic equation. 
So hopefully this video was useful. If it was, like, subscribe and share. If you want to see more videos in this sort of preparing for A-level playlist, then the playlist will be linked in the video description. And you can also go over to my channel for tons more A-level math tutorials if you want to get ahead with that as well. Thanks for watching and hopefully it was useful.